Hello, I suppose all of you understand how machine learning is important to the business transformation. Data science, machine learning, deep learning, it's all about project. Project is a concept to transform the intelligence to something valuable for the business. So today, I want to talk from the approach of operational style to how we handle machine learning. And the one of primary key, you should know how to structuring your project to maximize the benefit in the business, in technical aspect. So do not waste our time and let's start. So today we will talk about the structure of data science project. I want to begin the discussion with license. Because data scientists use software they didn't write and data they don't own pretty much all the time. You have probably heard about the term IP. It is get referenced in startup culture and awful a lot. In common parlance, it simply means property that is a creation of the mind. In law, it is get a bit more specific. In general terms, intellectual property is any product of the human intellect that the law protects from unauthorized use by others. IP is an intangible and the result of the someone brains. People and companies spend a lot of time, energy and resources bringing ideas to life. We allow them to own these ideas to reward them and sharing what they have created, to intensive them to create more, to protect them so they feel safe sharing these ideas in the future. Copyright subsists at the moment of creation. What that means is that the copyright of a work comes into existence at the moment of creation. If what you created is able to be protected by copyrights and is original, then you don't need to go anything else for the copyright to exist. And we have several types of license. The first one is CCO license, the second one is permissive software licensing, and that one me IT license and the last one is copyleft license. In the lower right you can see CCO license, it is about there is no strictly copyright uh, applied into your project. This is just like an uh, example you can to take a look. The second element in here is make file. It is just like a list of rules. This makes your code task oriented and anyone can enter to your repo can see the series of steps necessary to perform a given task. Or better. You can just run the make commands and not even worry about the inner working. Make files help the data scientist workflow immensely. We work with a lot of different tools and sometimes just trying to remember basic steps on a tool we have not used in a while and it can really slow us down. Make files help document and streamline the steps that need to be taken. Finally, they help ensure reproducibility, helping to keep data science planted firmly in the realm of science. And at the bottom you can see the example how the make files look like. The next element in this list is the readme file. It is the top level readme for developers using this project. A good readme is like the face of your project. It is the first thing a person looks at your project and it gives them a very brief introduction to your project. A good looking and helpful readme file can make your project stand out and grab attention from the community. It will help them understand your project, how they can get it working and why they should contribute. And you can find a lot of readme files in GitHub repositories and I totally agree that it's like a face of your project and you should concern to keep good positions of readme file in any development stages. Next important part in data science project structure is uh, data. And in data folder we should concern four directories. And the first one is external data. It is the data from third party sources. Take a look at the schema. Let's say this is our project. And this is a project environment in this green circle. All the sources that generate data for outside of this green circle is a third party sources. We have the first one, second one, third one and fourth one. And what is outside of this green circle, we can define as third party sources. It is external data. Next important directory in data is raw data. Raw data is the original and immutable data dump. What does it mean? Let's take a look again at the schema. Let's draw a magenta circle outside the green one. And this is the raw data. Why? 
because when we uh, get a data stream from third party sources all the data that is before data preprocessing part we can assume that it's a raw data because it is coming to project environment in original form in original structure before any transformation next directory that we should talk about is interim it is intermediate and transform data let's assume we are having a data transformation processes inside the model and it is our transformed data in this place we are having a processes that transforms raw data from third party sources to a more suitable for the model for example if you have a four data sources outside the green circle this process is converting the original data into something more readable for the model and the last directory in data folder is process data it is the final data set for modeling when we have transformed data the last part is to prepare the data for the model for example if we have transformed data as data that is pre-processed and after data cleaning after removing outliers then we need to convert into numerical format that is suitable for the model because model can make uh, predictions and classification and regression for numerical format data sets it is a final processed data for modeling once we have our data in our project we need to do something with this data and the actions of what we can do is depend on our problem and the problem could be a regression classification some unsupervised learning reinforcement learning problems and the models are like engine in our car that makes the predictions that trying to solve our problem from technical point of view models in our project structure is like a trained and serialized models or models predictions or model summaries which consist of uh, prediction metrics so when we have a transformed data in our project we can ingest in our model which should be trained for solving the problem and then we can have a single model which solve a specific problem or we can have multiple models which solves smaller problems for our project for our business problem okay let's move our diagram that we have created so far a little bit right here and next important thing in our data science project structure is notebooks and notebooks is like a playground of our experimentation and data exploration or a lot of smaller steps behind the final project phase and i think it also should be included into the project structure because uh, notebooks can include not only experimentation but you also can write some comments some ideas what you can do more about improvements about the bugs about the points uh, in your project that are the most important and um, you can put as many notebooks as you want depends on your project complexity but notebooks always help to read the project from more technical perspective if you want to check why you decided to take some algorithms uh, and what algorithm has been tested behind so i think it is important part and you should always concern the notebooks included in your project structure as well next folder that should be included in your data science project structure is reference and reference in uh, simple words are like documentation and it's like a uh, data dictionaries manuals and all our explanatory materials and to make it more simple for you let's say that all this schema that we have discussed before is our project it consists of models raw data transform data process data notebooks and all things together in one place okay this is our project and then we need to create something that should be readable for contributors or for end users or for your partner or for your team college i think that this domain should be included in your data science project structure because if you do not include any material that introduce about your project usage it should be difficult to project versioning or to transfer your job to another team member so reference is like the bridge between the project itself and the documentation how to use this project and i think the reference folder should be included to any professional project and if you want to create this one you must concern it about as well so that's it for reference and go next next important part in our data science project structure is reports and reports basically are generated analysis as html pdf markdown or different files that explain about your model success and some analysis 
And if you have a diagram that you have created so far and focus only on Jupyter Notebook and model part, we always concern about the model metrics because model metrics describes the success that we achieved in solving the specific problem. And on the left side that's come from Jupyter Notebooks, we always need to make some quick analysis that explain about the calculation, about your decision that you have made behind your models. And in order to make your reports more readable and more valuable, you always need to make some figures inside the reports. And that means you can to visualize your important part of analysis. You can visualize some metrics that should be important for improvements. It is like uh, generated figures used in reporting. And uh, at the end of reports, you should include some summaries, some text, some useful information together with visualization of analysis and then make some conclusions. It's very important for future improvements and for contributing with team members. Now, let's think, what if you want to reproduce your project in different location, in different server, in different cloud system? For this, we need to define a requirement.txt file. And keep in mind that each model can have its own requirements file or the full project can have its own single requirements. So we need to define how requirements belong to each model that we have in our project. And this allow us to reproduce the model in different location and reproduce by your team members and by your colleagues in different technical environments. This also allows your project to be more scalable and uh, flexible to adopt to different technical environments as well. Okay, when we have defined what requirement.txt is doing, let's think what about if we want to convert our project environment to a Python model. And that uh, setup.py is doing. And setup.py makes the project installable with pip install minus e and dot. And this allows us to use a project environment as a model in different location in different conditions. And also it is very suitable if we want to reproduce our project into higher level hierarchy. I mean that we can integrate our project into more higher level structure. And uh, this is very useful if we are working only on the part of the very very big project and our smaller project is responsible only the subsets of the full set of problems. Problems. And this allows us to reproduce our project environment to solve similar problems or if you want to share our project environment to the others. So setup.bi is very beneficial if you want to do it. And if you want to get more familiar with this, I explain all steps what you have to do to convert your environment to a Python model. Let's check my YouTube channel and you will see. And finally, we have the final part in our data science project structure, and it is source. The source is represented by three letters, C, R, C. And this is a source code for use in this project. And in this folder, we usually put init file. And init file is required if you want to convert your project environment to a model. I explained a little bit about it in the previous part in this video. And again, if you want to check it out, check my other videos in my YouTube channel. So on the top of that we have one, two, three, four folders in our source folder. It is a data. It is a script to download or generate data. It is not the data itself, but there are scripts that download the data for your project. Let's say it's makedataset.pi and it's generating raw dataset for the model. Remember at the beginning of this video we defined what is the raw data. Second, it is a future. It is a script to turn raw data into features for modeling. So we have a script uh, that builds features that makes some data transformation for our project. And after this, we need to put models into a special folder. And here is a script for train our model. And in this example, we can have a one script to make a prediction in our model. And the second script is for training. So the best practice shows that we should split the procedures in our project. The one procedure is for training and the second procedure is for predicting. Because if you have some issues, the best practice shows that it's better to debug your issues if you have multiple files corresponding to different parts in your project. And the last part is visualization. Visualization directly reflects the output and some analysis that you have done behind your project.
and uh, as I mentioned before some visualization can be inserted in your reports in your documentation and it's very beneficial information for collaborators and for end users so that's all what I wanted to say today with this video and I will keep doing series for MLOps in my youtube channel please subscribe my youtube channel right now if you want to get a new fresh content in future and see you on the next video bye bye